Hey everyone, welcome to season two of the Gals Chat Podcast. This is your co-host Amy. And this is your co-host Laura. In today's episode of the podcast, we're interviewing Susie Martinez, who is going to talk to us about being an engineer at NASA and fashion in STEM. Susie is an additive manufacturing engineer from NASA Marshall Space Flight Center. Her current project is in the in-space manufacturing group and is working on putting more manufacturing capabilities on the International Space Station. She started her account, Ad Astra Sue, to showcase that there is space for women in STEM and we just have to forge our own space. So, hey, Susie, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing great. Thank you guys so much for having me on here. I am so excited. We are so excited to have you here. Of course. Thanks so much for being here. (laughs) Yeah, so yeah, I mean, we've been following your journey for a while now online, but we've never got a chance to really talk and get to know you. So I'm really excited to do that. Yeah, I love your post and like seeing you online and how you've like, I noticed that you transitioned your account to more like science based account or your personal career. So we'll be talking about that later on. But to start off, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself and um like how you are at your current role and how you got to where you are right now? Uh, Yeah, so I am an additive manufacturing engineer, just like you've already mentioned, um, which is basically a fancy word for 3D printing. Uh, A lot of people have seen small desktop 3D printers like MakerBots or, you know, desktop metal. Uh, But what we work with are room size 3D printers, and they print stuff for the RS-25 engines, the life support systems, ECLIS, and wind tunnel testing, and pretty much anything that NASA could need uh, printed. Um, So we have a lot of customers, and we have been doing a lot of research over the last couple of years on materials, and we just do stuff for NASA, you know, Um, but how I got to NASA was I was an intern in 2016, and then I was a co-op from 2017 to 2018, and then when I graduated college, they hired me full-time as an additive manufacturing engineer, and I've been there ever since. Oh, that's awesome. Was your major on additive manufacturing materials or manufacturing? I'm a materials engineer, so I have a background in materials. (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. Um, No, actually, I have a bachelor's in mechanical engineering. I wish I had done materials because it kind of fits more of what I like. like. Um, But I did get a C in my materials class, so maybe that wouldn't have been such a great idea. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty cool. Uh, So what does like the day in the life of an additive manufacturing engineer look like? And can you tell us more about some of the things that you worked on? Yeah. So um, a day in the life is a lot different since COVID hit. Um, I'm sure it is for you guys as well. Before COVID, I was working in a lab. And in my lab, we have all of our machines. And we would set up the builds in the machines and set up the parameters and the supports for the build so that they wouldn't crash in the machines. And we would clean out the machines and take out the parts and stuff. It was really busy, you know, and and really fun to actually work hands on in the machines. And I got dirty all the time. Like I had I would leave with dirt like smeared on my face, even though I had like a respirator helmet on and everything. It was hilarious almost. Um, But some of the cool stuff that I've worked on, I'm actually going to show you or describe to you. Um, So I have, this is actually the very first thing that I printed. It is a metal Inconel 718 printed Boba Fett head. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Oh my Um, God, this is so cool. um, So this is, this is legit. That's so cool. Material. Um, So this can go into space and come back. It would survive. Um, So yeah, this is, it's just like a pencil holder, but Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was super cool. This is my very first print. Um, yeah, I loved this. I keep it in my room. It used to be on my desk, but when, you know, COVID, I brought everything home. Um, another thing, I actually got this before I worked full-time at NASA. This I got as an intern. So this is just a 3D printed NASA meatball with all the colors. And this is printed on a machine called a Fortis 900. Um, it's about the size of a large SUV. Um, and it ha- can have different heads so that it does different colors. And it can have dissolvable um 
supports, which is super cool. So we would take something like this after having the supports on the little vector here, and then we would just put it in like a little bath and the, the supports would just dissolve off of it. So then you have like really wow, nice, clean, sick. crisp lines. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cute. Um, and yeah. my personal favorite of my items that I own, I did not 3D print these. These were 3D printed on the ISS. Wait, I did a project on that when I was in school. So well, it was these. Do, <laughs> I had to do a presentation on like okay. the 3D printers that get taken out to space. And I'm pretty sure like they showed those. I like I was yeah. I looked at a picture oh. of those like wrenches. Oh my god, this is so cool. <laughs> yeah, so you want to describe what it is to yeah, the listeners? Yeah, so these are printed on the ISS. This is just the standard wrench sets that they have printed on the ISS. This was the first functional thing printed on the ISS, not the first thing printed on the ISS, but they actually used these in space and then we brought them back to have them tested. And since I work in the in-space manufacturing group, uh they're at my house. So <laughs> um, so, so here jealous. we are. Wow, that's so cool. I am so jealous. And literally, she's like, like, oh, I have these wrenches that I used on the ISS. It's all no big I, deal. I did a video for, um, I actually just recently acquired these. I did a video for CBS Unstoppable for their space day. And they were like, oh, you know, talk nice. about in space manufacturing. And I was like, okay, I can do that. So I was like, hey, my coworker, <laughs> where are these at? And he was like, oh, I'll give them to you. I'm like, cool beans. Oh um, my god. Nice, nice. So yeah, I've worked on some pretty cool stuff. Um, the most recent things that I worked on has been, you know, in space manufacturing. So uh, the last year and a half, I've been working on the in space manufacturing project, which is currently working to put another 3D printing machine up on the ISS. So we currently have the made in space added a manufacturing facility. Um, and we also have the refabricator up there, which is recycling machine, um, which is actually supposed to be coming back as soon as we can get it off the ISS. And then we're going to be sending another machine up there as soon as the machines are done and the contract is up. But we've been working diligently to put a metal machine on the ISS. So hopefully within the next couple of you know years, we will have functional you know metal printing instead of just plastic printing um, so that they won't have to wait for a resupply mission if something breaks or if they need an emergency part or if, God forbid, Apollo 11 ha or Apollo 13 happens again. Um, we'll have the capabilities to to fix it. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. So what's going to happen to the um, recycler? Because um, so, yeah, that was where my interest was. <laughs> like, that's uh, yeah, really cool um, that I have a like plastic recycler up there. So if it's going to come down, yeah, what's so, going to happen? Yeah. Uh, the idea behind the recycler was that we had, we feed it parts like this, you know, parts that we're done with mm -hmm. that we don't need to use anymore. And then we crunch it up and then we make filament out of it. So this is filament that I made in the same manner, not on the ISS, but um, the idea is that you can make a filament out of it and then create something else that you could use. Um, and we have done our tests and stuff and it was just time, it, the contract ended in the time for it to come back. We're hoping to stray away from plastic printing on the ISS as a whole. And hopefully, you know, we'll, as the future develops, we'll have more metal printing on the ISS. Cause that's where the future is going. Mm -hmm. Right. No. My it's favorite thing crazy. was There's... the Boba Fett pencil holder. <laughs> Yeah, this is also my favorite thing. Like it's um, it sits beside my bed. Like it's not even in my office anymore. It just <laughs> Yeah, I'm it's so a precious. huge Star Wars nerd. And you know, I liked man I liked Boba Fett before the Mandalorian was cool, so Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. OG. <laughs> yeah, there's so many new Star Wars fans. Yeah. Oh yeah, but I mean it's okay. We welcome them all. <laughs> yes. The more the, <laughs> the more the better. <laughs> the baby Yoda I have a baby Yoda t shirt. Oh my gosh, baby Yoda is so yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I'm a huge Star Wars fan too. Yeah. So, so Susie, I know you have mentioned briefly that um, you're going to be moving on to a different role. Uh, do you know what your next role is going to be, or do you know, or how, what made you want to make a switch at this point in your career? Yeah. Um, so I've been with Additive Manufacturing about four ish years on and off because I was a co op, but uh, two years full time. And I was looking for something a little less technical, um, a little more, you know, systemsy and broad. So I'm actually going to be transitioning to work as a operations controller on mission controls 
for the ISS. Um, so here at NASA Marshall, we have um, what we call the HOSC, which is just the mission operations for all of the experiments that happen on the ISS. And we get to talk to the astronauts and make sure that they're doing okay. If there's ever a problem, you know, they talk to us. Um, so I will be operations controller for one of their experiments and the experiments will change over time. So I'm really excited for that. I think it is going to be super awesome. Yeah, that sounds really cool. That's so cool. So with, you said you, you get to communicate with the ISS like directly, like in terms of like operations. That's really sick. <laughs> that yeah. sounds really good. Um, um, so what does that look like? Like, is that over video or it's just like, what? how do you communicate with them? Um, so there's a lot of different types of people that work within the mission operations. Um, so there is the PACOMs who talk directly to the astronauts. Um, they make sure that they are doing their experiments, their their log for the day, you know, all the stuff that they have to do. And then we have the operations controllers, which is what I'm going to do, which has more control over how the experiments are handled and whether the, they got their experiments done for the day and that kind of things. But there's like a whole bunch of other jobs that have a specific role for, you know, their their spot on the ISS. Um, so I personally don't think I will be talking to the astronauts unless it's in terms of an experiment. Um, but hopefully someday in the future, I'll get to be a paycom. So they're the ones that just have open conversations with the astronauts. So I think that would be super fun. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it actually reminds me of that show, that new space show that came out on Netflix. Space like, Force? I think a year ago. Yeah, Space Force. <laughs> That one is. Oh, okay. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's really um, funny. <laughs> I loved Space Force so much because it was hilarious, and the it was so much yeah. funnier if you actually worked for the government. Like, there were so many like little jokes in there that I was like, "Oh my gosh, you would only understand that if you yeah. worked for the government." Yeah, which is my experience. I've worked in the government like my yeah. whole life, so a lot of the jokes I was like, "Yep, totally." <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> There's a lot of scenes in there that that show you like how they communicate with the astronauts and it's mostly like via video and like there's like this whole mission control room and it looks really cool. So that's yeah. why I was curious. I was like, I wonder how you talk to them, you know, or what that is like. Yeah, so the there's actually like a mission control room kind of very similar to the one at Johnson. Um, in, in that aspect, um, I do believe it's over audio and not video because they are super busy and they don't have time to look at another human on the screen, you know, telling them what to do. So I, I do think that it's like audio instead of video. Mm -hmm. But I will let you yeah, know when sure. I find out <laughs> for sure. So, I mean, working at NASA or even, you know, being there, like what's common myth about your profession or feel that you would want to debunk? A lot of people think that NASA is just a bunch of old white men. <laughs> and there are a bunch of old white men. But there's a whole lot of young people. And um, NASA has all as close to 50-50 men and women as, as any government agency has. I think they're like 49 and 51, you know, women to men. Um, so it's really cool um, as somebody who grew up in a really small town where the only engineer I knew was me <laughs> to, you know, I, and I wasn't even an engineer yet. Um, so seeing, you know, so many awesome women to like look up to within NASA has really been like, it's really been awesome for me. Um, and I know a lot of other young women within NASA that were co-ops and then now full-time like I was, who also look up to a lot of those other women. And I really think that People think that it's just like it used to be in the 60s, you know, with the short sleeves and those skinny ties, you know, when it was all just white men. And it's not like that at all. That's that's good to know. I like that. It's been growing, you know, and evolving. And I like that, that you're able to find people to connect with. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of people think that it's you have to be perfect to work at NASA as well. Um I personally graduated with 3.2 GPA and I was, I made it just fine. You know, um, mm -hmm. a lot of people are like, oh, you have to be 4.0 because it's NASA. Like that's the way it works. And it's not like that either. Um, 
yeah <laughs> not like that at all. that's good to know I think a lot <laughs> of people like sometimes stop themselves from even applying because they think like oh they have to meet like every single requirement and they have to be like perfect let's say and that's really good so you said you interned I'm gonna take a step back but you said you interned there uh for a couple of years you had two co-ops so I went to a community college and I loved my community college if they would have let me graduate with my bachelor's degree from my community college I would have stayed all four years um I was very active and in my community college and I took you know all the way up to differential equations and physics too at my community college before I graduated and moved on to my university I had gotten encouragement from my student government association advisor. I was the vice president and I have a twin sister and she was the president. So we're identical, like completely. And she's also a mechanical engineer. <laughs> wow. What are the, yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> I would <can> never guess. <laughs> so um, I, she had advised me to, hey, you know, you're going to do engineering. Maybe you should apply to this thing called NCAS which is National Community College Aerospace Scholars, which was a, you know, one, two week program that NASA offered for community college students to like build a robot and then go home pretty much. And I was like, okay, you know, whatever, why not? What's the worst they can say? No. So <laughs> I went to the website to apply and I had missed the deadline by two days. I was like, okay, what am I going to do? So I did some more research and found, you know, NASA interns. And I was like, hey, what about this? So I applied and I notified like the NCAS officer person. I was like, hey, you know, I applied for this. They're like, yeah, that's not NCAS. That's like an actual internship. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna get that, but we'll see what happens. Um, and so I applied, you know, to the ones that I was interested in. And then I worked as a math tutor. So I was in the math lab working and I got an email <laughs> from the intern advisor at NASA. And she was like, congratulations on your 10 week internship at NASA Marshall. And I literally like just burst into tears. Like I could not believe it. And I sent her a message back and I said, is this a joke? I was like, is this actual, like, did I actually get picked? <laughs> and she was like, uh, yeah. And she was like, I'm going to be honest with you. I've never received an email like this before. Like, I literally responded back. I was like, is this some sort of, like, sick joke? Because I was like, I'm, I'm from a town. <laughs> Imagine right? him. I'm from a town of, like, 20,000 people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had good grades and stuff. But, like, there's thousands and thousands of people that applied to NASA internships and I was like oh this was a mistake like they have made a mistake you know um and it wasn't turns out it was not a mistake um and I met that NASA coordinator or the intern coordinator and she was an angel she was like I can't believe you sent me that email and I was like Oh, <laughs> but yeah, we, we came, we came out to be best friends. It's okay. Um, but yeah, so I got my, <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah. That. Oh my God. I, it's like my and, um, story. It was funny. I had met some people. We, we started a group me for all these interns. Mind you, there were 200 interns at NASA Marshall that year. Oh. It was the most they'd ever had. And it was the best summer of my life. It was so awesome. Um, oh. But I had made some friends before and our very first day, um, this girl had been an intern previously and she was like, okay, well, the coordinator isn't going to know who you are. So just like, you know, stay out of her way, you know, whatever. And we were taking a picture and she was like, Susan, why don't you come over here in the front? You're short. And I looked at that other girl and she <laughs> looked at me and I was like, how does she know my name? And I was like, it's because I sent her that stupid email. Like she knew who I was. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that email. Oh my God. <laughs> it was in a way, it made you stand yeah, out, no, I you mean, know? That's okay. You know, whatever. It um, worked. So, yeah, that was <laughs> that was my internship. So, transitioning onto your social media, like at the beginning of the episode, we mentioned that um, you used to have a, a nail account, um, but now you talk more about your career, uh, working in NASA. What inspired you to start using this platform for engineering? And um, your Instagram was initially dedicated to nail art called Nail Art Ulala. <laughs> what made you want to start an engineering yeah, communication? Yeah, nail art Ulala. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, so actually my nail art account and Ad Astra Sue are the same account, you know. Um, it's actually 10 years old. So I started the account in 2011, which seems like it just makes me feel really, 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 really old, like really old. Um, <laughs> but um, I had made some really great friends at the time. You know, I actually still keep in touch with a lot of those people. Um, and the nail community on Instagram was massive, like absolutely just unbelievable. Um, and then it kind of died down, you know, like everything does on social media. And um, I, when I started college, I could not maintain it anymore. I had to, you know, I would like slack and then I'd be like, oh, sorry, I didn't post, you know, whatever. Um, and then I would only post whenever I painted my nails, which was literally never. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, this count is just dying. Like, I don't even know what to do with it. And it had like so ever many followers. And I was like, I think it's time to try something new. And I talked to all of my like previous nail friends that had followed me throughout the whole 10 years. And I was like, this is what I'm planning on doing. Like, I need to try something new. I need an outlet for this. And I really liked the idea of having like the community that we have, like, you know, meeting you guys and like meeting all of these other people. And I have, I have the community within NASA, but they're all boys. Um, <laughs> so I was like, I really like, and you know, my friend Mary Wynn, we love Mary. She's awesome. Um, she was like, Hey, <laughs> you might want to try this. She's like, you know, this is kind of like what I do. She goes, not really so much anymore, but what I really used to do was like be super heavy in the STEM community. And I was like, you know what? That's not a bad idea. And I talked to some of my other, you know, friends I was like would you like feel weird if nail art ooh -la -la didn't exist anymore and they were like girl we all moved on we all have our own lives you know it's not like we're as dependent on that nail community as we were and I was like you know that's a great point that's an excellent point and I was like and that's not really I still do nails I still do my own nails you know um but that's not really me anymore I like to do nails and I love admiring people's nail art and stuff and I do my own um but it's not really what my life is about anymore. And, and for a long time, it really was like, that's what my life was about. I, I wanted to go to cosmetology school, you know, literally up until like my first two weeks of college, I was like, I'm going to go to cosmetology school. And my mom was like, no, you're not. You're not going to cosmetology school. You're going to go to school and you're going to do computer science. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do computer science. <laughs> um, I did not do computer science for those who are listening. I did not do it um, because I hate coding. This just confirmed my suspicions <laughs> when I had to take a coding class. I hated it. It was terrible. Um, mm -hmm. But engineering was a much better fit. And I'm so glad that I picked engineering. I'm so glad my mom was like, ha, 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 no, you're not going to do that. Because um, I, I mean, I would never have dreamed in a million years that I would ever have worked at NASA. Like, holy crap. Still, sometimes I think about it and I'm like, Dang it. That's amazing. <laughs> um, but I really wanted to like be the type of person that I would have wanted to look up to as a young girl interested in STEM. Uh, there's a whole lot more, you know, like resources and, you know, availability for programs for girls who are interested in STEM now, even down to like you know, elementary school. I've done talks for, you know, elementary students and middle school and high school and college and all kinds of places because I want those types of girls or boys, you know, to see they can do this, like they can become this. So I, anytime I have an opportunity to go back to my hometown in Ashland, Kentucky and talk, and I have a lot, um, I do it because I want them to see like what I never saw. You know, I wanted to see I want them to see like a little girl who's like, oh, I like rockets, you know, whatever can be like, I can work at NASA, not I got to do whatever I can pretty much or be a nurse, whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but yeah, the, I found that this community was like really open and welcoming for somebody who is new to this because I've only actually been running this account as a STEM account since October which it seems like a lot longer. I guess it's only like six months. <laughs> um, but um, as somebody who's been within the realms of like running a big account for a long time, it's very different. 
Like when I stopped maintaining my account on Instagram as Nail Art Ula Law, I don't even think we had like video available on Instagram. Like, you know, it was just post and then people liked it and you're like, oh, cool. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and now there's like, you know, all this yeah. stuff, like algorithms and you have to keep up with posting and, you know, people like really care about what other people are posting which is great how important would you say like the intersection of stem fashion and beauty is for you um so i think that seeing i'm I'm not gonna like toot my own horn here but i'm just gonna say this i i feel like seeing somebody within like a, a person as an engineer working at nasa not wearing a polo and jeans every day is important. I think that that's really important because that's what I thought engineers were. Whether it was a boy or a girl, actually, I really didn't think of, this sounds so bad. When I was young, I didn't even think that girls were engineers. Like, I didn't know any girl engineers. So that wasn't even like a realm within my mind. Um, But all the engineers that I did know of were like, you know, not very fashionable. Let's put it that way. And I I really made it a point to be like, I want this account to emphasize that you can be girly and you can still be smart. You can still be fashionable and still be clever. You know, people can still respect you as an engineer if you're wearing a tank top, right? Like, or a bikini or, you know, whatever this is, you know, just, um, it's, it's just important to me for other girls to be like, I don't have to dumb myself down or, you know, wear what they think I should wear to be an engineer. I agree. Yeah, it's important to be able to, like, feel freely to express yourself with your clothing, your makeup, and every it's unique for everyone, you know, but it's important for us to be able to feel like we can and that there's a space for it, you know, and it's not something that's unacceptable just because you're an engineer you know it's exactly and part of it it's a part of our identity yeah and there's a lot of accounts that I like look up to in that way like cat you guys know cat um and um curly coconut if you guys know her too their outfits are always like (laughs) on point and I love them I look to them for like fashion inspiration and and Mary as well like every time they post I'm just like oh these girls are so awesome like they're so beautiful and their fashion is so mm-hmm. good and every day I'm like okay I gotta try the next thing you know if my husband looks at me and goes you're gonna wear that I know it's a winner I know it. it's awesome <laughs> yes mm-hmm. I was gonna say with um I love how in alignment you are with yourself and your personality and like how bold you just walk with it and own it. Um, Along with um, that and maybe just your career in general, have you faced any challenges throughout your journey and how have you dealt with them? Um, Yeah. um, About on the, uh, on the issue of confidence, it has taken me years, five, 10 15 and I'm only 25 like it has taken me years to even come close to like remotely understanding who I wanted to be or like what type of person I wanted to be and every single year since I can even remember like I have changed like completely um every year and also didn't help that I have I mean I love my sister with my entire heart but we're twins and we have the same face. Like we are ident- completely identical. Um, and we have always been the barber twins. That's my maiden name, the barber twins. And my my dad couldn't even tell us apart until we were 15. Like that's how identical we are. <laughs> um, and so it has taken me and her a long time to, you know, individualize ourselves Um, So I feel like a lot of my confidence has been slower, like slower to gain and slower to just figure out who I am and who I wanted to be. And we have so many similarities. Like we are both, you know, engineers at, or she, she worked at NASA as an intern. um, And then she went on to work at Disney. So then like Disney became her thing and like NASA is my thing. Um, And like, 
but she does art and all this other cool stuff that I don't do. Um, and she has always done art and she's been amazing at it. And my mom would always, whenever she talked about my sister's art, my mom would always go, but Susan does nails. <laughs> <laughs> so that's become like a running joke in my family but susan does nails so um so I, you know i had to go and get a nasa internship so that i wasn't susan does nails anymore <laughs> um, <laughs> um but yeah my my confidence has taken a long time and you know when you're young and you're on the chunky side you have those girls that are just not nice and not kind at all and I had some girls like that which did not help my self-esteem at all um so yeah I think I probably like came into my own confidence when I was like 22 like it's only been a couple of years and um that's one thing that has nothing to do with your question I apologize um it does but <laughs> of the things that I've overcome that's definitely one of them um as yeah, far as like all you connected. know um, as far as like engineering struggles, um, my senior design project was a whirlwind and we had to create a robot from the ground up. We're left with absolutely nothing and only had a year to do it and, or, you know, two semesters to do it. And I don't think I've worked harder in my life ever. And I literally did not sleep for two semesters. It was so rough my senior year they're like oh yeah you know your senior year is gonna be way more chill and you're gonna have less hours stuff no that is not true at all i did not sleep it was so terrible um i wouldn't change it for the world though because i learned so much but that was honestly one of my biggest struggles well well we, we're looking forward to seeing more of you and your content but thank you so much for joining us today uh, we're really excited to see everything that you get to accomplish in future years and can't wait to stay in touch. Yeah, I can't wait to stay in touch with you guys too. This was so awesome. Thank you so much.